Hey, how you going? And welcome to the channel. My name's Pete. Um, so, after nine months, is this the video where we finally get back onto the Case 580? Uh, we will have to see. Before we do that, um, there's a couple of little other little jobs um, that, uh, yeah, I want to show you through. Um, one of them's a $10 lawnmower that I picked up. And the other one is a, uh, a motorbike that I picked up. It's not mine though. Anyway, let's have a look. All right, enjoy. So this is not gonna be the main video. I expect this will be just a little subplot on another video. But uh, yeah, my lawnmower's kind of worn out. Um, so I picked this one up for 10 bucks. Um, he actually wanted to give me a second mower, but I think I've got enough stuff here at home. So I just said, no, just this one will be fine. Uh, the other one was a little Briggs and Stratton thing. Uh, but yeah, this is a Honda. Um, it's got a uh, aluminium cast alley um, mower deck, which is a good thing. Um, looks like a very old design, side valve thing. But yeah, um, it looks fine. Blades are good. Everything on it seems fine, except it's got no spark. So today's mission is to try and figure out if we can get some spark going and see if we can get this thing running. Okay, so there's two bolts in the side of the cover there, which means you've got to pull all the um, carburetor air filter and everything off. And I'm not going to go to this much effort and not strip and clean the carby while I'm here. But anyway, let's see what... I kind of just thought that would lift off. Okay, so you've got to pull the recoil off and then that allows you to tip that back. A couple little hooks under there. And it looks like one of those bolts is too long and it's been hitting on the uh, cooling fan. So that's something else to be looked at. <clears throat> um, I'm guessing this will have points because the uh, coil seems to be underneath the flywheel. Um, I may be wrong, but uh, yeah, let's get it off and see what we find. Okay, there's a sticker on the side here that says don't hit the flywheel with a hammer, which I kind of get it. There might be a magnet inside there that's just glued in position. It does have the three extraction bolts on the top there, but I don't have the extractor tool with me. So, I'm just going to try and gently lever this. That wasn't it, no. Or was it? Something else just let go. Very nervous about this. <coughs> I would like to get the uh, the right tool for the job, which I have at work. I just don't want to go into work just yet. Okay, so with some gentle levering and coercion, we managed to get the flywheel to pop loose. Uh, like I say, it does say not to use a hammer, so uh, let's pretend that didn't happen. All right, let's see what we got. And yep. My guess is, that looks alright in there, no damage to any magnet or anything silly, so that's good. Underneath that will be a set of points. Um, all this dirt, I might go down and just blow all that out. I assumed 
<coughs> uh, it would have been a case of uh, dirty points, but I'm also noticing when it goes over the cam load there, they are barely moving. So I would say fairly well out of adjustment as well. So, readjust the points and see if that makes a difference. And I'll clean them while I'm here, silly not to. Okay, so I've readjusted that so that we have definite movement there. We've got clearance in there and we have an open gap there. Next step, I'm just going to clean it. Uh, I've got some sandpaper here, uh, which if you have a points file, it's so much better. This can leave residue behind, or not residue, but bits of uh, grit, and that's going to uh, also mess things up a bit. But for initial, it'll do. So to finish it off, I just got a business card, put a bit of uh, acetone on it, and just give that a wipe through just to clean it. Uh, something non-residual, so not a not petrol or something like that, but acetone or thinners or something along those lines. Uh, anyway, I think we're right there. Just for fun, I'm going to put a multimeter on that and just check continuity, uh, and then we'll reassemble it and see if we have sparkage. So that's open and closed. Perfect continuity, almost. And open. Alright, that's a good thing. Let's put it back together. I'll do my best to show you, but I'm not sure if Spark is going to show up on the camera. I can see it with my naked eye, but whether the camera catches it or not, don't know. Okay, so we've got reliable Spark. I am a bit concerned about all this residue here, so I'm just going to check the uh, tension on the head bolts. Um, I will rebuild the carby. I'll f if I find something, I'll show you, but otherwise I'll just rebuild this, put it all back together, and we'll give it a go. All right, so it's all back together. Um, the carby was pretty clean. Not too much debris inside there at all, to be honest. Uh, also, the spark plug was wet, which kind of indicates that the uh, it was getting fuel. Um, <clears throat> the only other thing I did to it, um, this bolt here I think was a little too long. It was interfering with the, the blower fan in there, the cooling fan. So I've just put a couple of washers under that just to space it up a bit. I haven't pulled the cord yet. Um, I have checked oil and oil is good, but it looks a bit old, so I'm going to give it a go. If it fires up, then I'll shut her off and we'll change the oil. Okay, so it runs. Um, needs a little bit more tweaking with that uh, carburetor and the engine shutoff. That's in the shutoff position and that seems to be where it runs the best. Although it's not getting revs. Uh, it sounds like it's kind of starving for fuel. Anyway, I'll check it out see what's going on. Based on a recommendation from my friend Steve at uh, Steve's Place Down Under, I've lashed out and bought myself one of these ultrasonic cleaners. And I'm just trying it out on a carburetor off that uh, Honda lawnmower. And I can see that there's a bit of gunk coming off it already, which is uh, interesting. Got it set for 10 minutes. We'll let it run and see if it makes a difference to how this engine runs. 
Okay, so 10 minutes has gone through. That does look a little bit, uh, what do you call it, murky. Still cool. Yeah, I don't know if that's a heck of a lot cleaner than it was. Shit, sorry, keep the camera in focus. I don't know if that's a heck of a lot cleaner than it was. Um, no, I might give it a bit longer, I think. Give it another 10 minutes. Well, it's definitely done something. I mean, the water in there is quite murky. So, uh, and it is a little bit warmer. So hopefully the offending uh, orifices that have been um, blocked, hopefully they're freed up. Um, let's give it a blow off and see what it looks like. Like I say, it looks a bit cleaner, on the outside at least. That little hole right there, uh, I think that's the one that was blocked. Or had some debris or something in there. Not sure gonna blow it off with the air dry it all out put it all back together and see how she goes okay so I've had the carby in the ultrasonic cleaner um, probably about 25 minutes all told um, a lot of gunk came off it whether it actually cleaned out um, the galleries and orifices that were blocked I don't know I haven't actually tried to start this yet you're watching it for this for the first time same as me so uh, Let's uh, pull the cord and see what happens. We'll go flat out with a bit of choke. Ah. So far about the same as it was. Well, that's disappointing. Pretty much no difference to the way it was before I spent $100 on that ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, genuinely not sure what the next step is. Um, maybe I'll try swapping out the carby with uh, something else I have around. I'm not sure. I'd much prefer to get the genuine carby running properly with it. Um, I don't know. Alright, at this point I'm not sure where my last bit of video left off. Um, I have poured an enormous amount of time into this, getting this mower running properly. Um, I've checked, had this car be apart, I've lost count how many times, and I just can't seem to get this thing to run properly. I think I've found there's a little jet that goes through there, and it's a tiny little thing. I mean, I had to get a bit of copper wire. That small was the only thing I could get, and it took a good half hour of messing about before I could finally clear that hole. Once the hole got cleared, then I could put it back in the um, uh, that Sonic cleaner, <coughs> uh, and in theory, the water can get through there. Um, and uh, hopefully that's clear and clean now. All right, so let's put it back together and see if it'll work this time. Um, just to give an idea of how sonic cleaners work uh, just to give an example I actually saw this in another video which I thought was quite interesting the video was about a guy getting a beer bottle turning it upside down and he just whacks the end of it and it's enough to pop the cap off um, the way that works is he's hitting it hard enough and sharp enough that it actually cavitates in the bottle in the right in the end and there's a, a little air bubble that uh, gets created and then when the water comes back and takes it up, that's a shock loading which actually blows the cap off. That's kind of how a sonic cleaner works. It's the, the uh, audio that's going through the water is shaking it around so much that it's just creating air bubbles that are pulsing and uh, shattering away any debris, any dirt, any scale, whatever. So 
the reason why I think it wasn't cleaning that is because water wasn't getting to it. There was a little air bubble trapped around it, which wouldn't allow water to get to it, so it couldn't clean it. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. I say that now. I haven't put this back together yet, so we don't know if it's going to work or not. Got it all back together. Uh, just a matter of pulling the cord and seeing if it works. seems to be running properly uh, although it's set up as a mulching mower and it's not working properly that part of it but anyway the motor's running yay I uh, modified the little cover plate at the back and that did a fantastic job um, I got a good part of my lawn mode so happy with that um, problem is I had to move some stuff around and then I went to uh, Start it again, and uh, yeah, that's a showstopper. So I had to go back to the old mower. Still works, but the blades are worn out, and it leaks oil everywhere, and now, well, you know, more jobs to fix. But the outcome is, yeah, this is a good machine. Um, seems to run just, uh, just lovely. What I find, um, <clears throat> I'm guessing the needle and seat's not working properly. Uh, because it just it's like it's flooding the whole time when you first start it and when it kind of consumes a bit of fuel and brings the level down to about right that's when she kicks off and just runs beautifully so anyway probably need to get another carb or needle and seat or something for it um, but yeah it's a good thing okay so a very short little video here interruption maybe in uh, in another video uh, I don't know if you remember a while back um, we went out and we picked up bought a John Deere tractor uh, 3140 I think it was um, from this guy's uh, farm shed uh, actually right now I will see if I can find that video and I will post the video of us uh, driving that thing out of the shed Anyway, so I can't actually remember how long ago that was, but um, we've had it here for a while and it's been a job that we've sort of done in between other jobs. Um, and our painter here has also been over it and it looks a bit different now. So uh, let's give you a look over it. Okay, here she is, the fresh coat of paint. Um, <clears throat> another couple of little things we did uh, one of the rules here in Australia is if you tow something behind uh, a vehicle, it has to be registered. But if you tow it behind a tractor, then it's classed as an implement of the tractor and its uh, registration is covered by the tractors. So all of our tippers and water tanks and everything are all set up on tractors uh, and we have a full air system fitted to these tractors, which is one of the jobs I've done whilst it was here so here's our air tank I'm hoping we can see up inside there's a compressor that we mounted ah, yeah that's not showing well but yeah the goal was there we are the goal was to try and keep the compressor and the air system looking as neat as possible and not really you know not a agricultural looking addition off the side of the tractor um, that front drag link was another thing we fixed up that was a mission um, yeah come back around this side see if we can see the air compressor a bit better that's pretty close to the uh, the bonnet but it's not touching there's about half an inch clearance there and of course we had to do some magic remounting the alternator and different pulleys and things to make it all fit and all work 
came up reasonably, reasonably well, I think. Um, there was a fault with this machine, which is why they stopped using it. I have been over it as much as I can, like I've done a full service on it and um, all new wheel bearings, I've had that whole front axle apart and redone that. Um, driven it extensively, I cannot get it to fault. Not saying there isn't a fault, I just can't find one. Without being able to find one, it's hard to fix. So this little guy here, just going back to the air system now, sorry. This guy here, uh, this plums into where the bleed valves used to be on the brakes. So one either side, and that tees up into this, and that's like a treadle valve. Uh, so that's your air system. So when you put your foot on the brakes normally, that opens this up and supplies air to the appropriate uh, service port. And the boss likes to have a uh, hand actuated brake lever as well. So yeah, anyway, that's all that part. But anyway, yeah, I just thought you might be interested in uh, seeing how we got on with it. Hope you enjoyed. Not sure if I even did a video about this. Um, I may have mentioned it in one of my earlier videos. Um, this motorbike that I got, geez, it'd be about a year ago, maybe two years ago. Um, yeah, so I sold this to my brother down in Brisbane and uh, he's had it for that time. He's done some pretty epic trips on it, to be honest. Um, I think he's been down to Tasmania on it and from Brisbane uh, and a few other runs around. Uh, Phillip Island, I think he went to. Don't quote me on this. Um, but anyway, it's the very maiden voyage that he did with this was up here in North Queensland when, uh, when he was first looking at it and <clears throat> unfortunately it kind of broke down about halfway through and he's been a little bit determined to come back and finish that trip so he has posted the bike back up to us um, taken all the stamps off it and uh, he's dressed it up with uh, saddlebags and all sorts of fancy things on the front there um, and yeah so bike's been going well and it's come back so I'm just uh, at the uh, transport depot I've just picked it up um, with what we call or what we've coined as the the bike you later 3000 we got the bike home successfully um, now's the fun part of unloading it um, it's a fairly heart in your throat kind of operation to have this uh, this whole bike hanging off this uh, makeshift little jib that I've had um, the upside to this though, of course, is if something goes wrong and it all comes crashing down, it's not my bike. So, doesn't matter. Just kidding, of course. Anyway, um, let's set it all up and uh, see if we can offload it. Something else I noticed, which I wasn't aware of at the time, but this looks like, I'm not sure if you can see that, looks like a dual compound rear tyre. See how it's a different sort of a, yeah in here so oh, it feels the same maybe he's just been pushing the envelope a bit anyway now the scary part
the story is when he went to load it onto the truck to send it up here they couldn't get it started so the battery is not completely flat but you know it's enough to light your dash lights and that's about it so first step put it on the charger charge up the battery and uh, let's see if we can get it fired up so Mike has been so good as to supply an external plug for uh, charging that's connected directly to the battery um, but then didn't give me the uh, corresponding plug to uh, put into it so I've had to lift all the bloody saddlebags and everything off to get the seat off so I can direct connect it into uh, my little charging system I've actually got a tiny little solar panel on the roof which goes through the charger where are we and that just uh, on my bike I've got a plug there which just plugs straight into it um, <clears throat> and I've set up this other extra uh, extra cable which just connects to the battery for his bike so we'll leave that go for a few hours and come back and see uh, see if she starts she's been on the charger for uh, two or three hours now um, it's making a liar out of me the sunshine out right now but for most of the day it's been drizzly rain so we haven't had any sun to work my solar panel so I've actually plugged it into a normal charger um, like I say it's been on for a couple of hours so let's uh, hit the key and see what she does Um, okay, so that started and ran beautifully. I think it's just a case of my brother doesn't know how to ride a motorbike properly. Anyway, um, I'm happy with that. Um, I will take it off this charger because now we know that it works and I'll just put it back onto the solar charger and can maintain its battery level um, as it sees fit. But anyway, there we go. It's a good thing. I should probably also mention, um, I know this is uh, a little bit... You know negative against myself i love my bike i absolutely love my bike but the sound this thing puts out is just awesome i love the sound of these uh these older four stroke uh sorry four cylinder sport touring bikes they just have a note to them that's awesome but that's you know personal opinion anyway okay so it appears our nine month interlude seems to be uh at an end <coughs> we're now working on the back hour again uh, first job I think we're gonna do I've got the uh, new thermostat here <coughs> so need to pull all the side off this um, drain the coolant out again and uh, fit the thermostat before I start that I'll take you for a quick tour on uh, all the other parts that I have acquired since then all right let's go have a look okay so one of the issues was the hydraulic pump seems to be a little bit weak in its performance so I have purchased a second hand pump. Uh, the problem with this one, if you can see the spline on this one is worn out. Internals are still good, but the spline's knackered. So I have to pull both pumps apart and swap out this input shaft. Um, also, we have two brand new front tires ready to be fitted, as well as Two brand new rear tyres ready to be fitted. There's a job I'm not looking forward to. But anyway, um, we can get some major work done on this thing. So uh, let's crack on and get it started. Hmm. What might have been ideal is if I had these 
load of arms up in the air, locked up in the air. Um, <coughs> wondering if I should do that. It's a lot of messing about trying to put a battery back in it. Nah, I'll work around it. Actually, no, I won't. That's a bit better. Alright, now where was I? Just to give you a bit of a look inside there, um, here's our new thermostat. It's got a little tag, a location tag, but can't really find anything in there to locate on. So I don't know if that means anything. Um, <clears throat> normally I like to put these to the top because that's kind of your bleed, um, what do you call it, bleed valve thing. Alright, just to give you a quick look inside. Um, here's our nice new shiny thermostat and a brand new seal. Um, this has a location tag on it, but it doesn't line up with... I can't find anything there for it to line up with. Um, there is in the other part, there's a little cutaway at the top there, which I expect makes room, or supposed to make room, for those uh, little poppet valves. Like I said, there's a location tag on there, but there's nothing for it to locate into, and all it's doing is actually preventing that from sitting down on its seat. Um, so I think the solution is, I'm just gonna nip that off. And that O-ring, or seal, whatever you wanna call it, fits inside, and that should seal all of this up. Um, <clears throat> pretty hesitant to put that in dry. Don't know that I have any elastic or silicon or RTV, so I'm think I do have rubber grease here somewhere. So maybe I'll have a look around and see what I got. Okay, I'm having a look in here at that edge, and I'm pretty confident nothing's going to seal on that. Certainly not uh, not reliably. Uh, so even with grease or something like that, it's not going to seal. So it has to be some sort of RTV. 
I have this, um, which I found, and that is mostly gone off. Somewhere about there is a tiny bit of stuff that hasn't gone off yet, so I'm just going to cut this open, squeeze the last bit out of it, and uh, yeah, hopefully that'll work. Um, clean it all up with a bit of acetone first, of course. Hmm. Watch me cut my finger off. Alright, let's get it together. Sorry, you're a little bit hidden from view there, but at the moment, and I don't mean to be rude, but I think it's more important than I see than more important that I see rather than you. Just gonna pop these back out and just put a bit of anti-squeeze on them, I think. I don't know why I didn't do this last time, but they were dry, so. Quick. Quick. Put your finger in there. <coughs> okay, that's looking good. No leaks. Not that there was ever any doubt. Um, I'm not going to start it just yet. I don't want to uh, pressurise it until that RTV has had a chance to go off. To be completely honest, I probably shouldn't have even put coolant in it just yet. But it's there now. It's done. And it's not leaking, so it'll be fine. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it for this particular uh, thing on the list. Okay, so there we are. We've made a start back on the backhoe. I can... Uh, continue ticking things off the list and also pretending that I have a list. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here, I think. This video is probably getting a little bit long with all the other bibs and bobs I've got on there. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next episode when it'll be back on uh, Project 580. All right, thanks. See ya. Actually, uh, one last little thing just before I go. Um, just a, a bit of a uh, follow-up, if you will, on a couple of the other jobs I've done. So the aircon in the truck, oh god, you've no idea how nice that is. But, like I said in the last video, that compressor is making noise. Um, I've spoken to uh, my friend who is a certified uh, aircon guy, and he said, yep, it's a time bomb, it's about to blow up. So I have purchased another compressor to go on that. Um, let me know if you want me to film that. It's just going to be taking that old compressor off, putting the new one on and regassing it. Probably not that exciting. Up to you. Let me know. Um, the other thing, the uh, excessive heat that was in the diff. Um, my curiosity got the better of me, uh, so I did pull that diff back out again just to make sure, you know, just to recheck my work because it was too hot for what it should have been. Uh, and... Everything was perfect. There was absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever. Um, it was just the gears bedding into themselves, I believe. I'm, again, I'm not 100% sure. I can tell you, though, with more use, it has settled down and it doesn't get hot anymore. Um, so, yeah, that's good news there, I suppose. All right, thank you again. See ya.